Cool. This is WTAE TV Pittsburgh. Right now, Channel 4 Action News is taking action for you. Tonight, four top stories, a missing psychiatric patient, a local school district on alert. How the two are connected. A robber hits a local business, but it wasn't the cash he was after. Thick smoke, quick flames, a tough night ahead for several local families, and firefighters still recovering. A woman shot her kids nearby tonight in arrest and a link to other violent crimes. We begin with a missing patient and the reason for the Mount Lebanon School District to cancel activities. Tonight, police say he could be in that area, and it is cause for concern. Action News anchor Michelle Wright is live in Mount Lebanon to make that connection. Michelle? Yeah, Mike and Sally, the Mount Lebanon police in the school district here is taking this very seriously. A mentally ill man escaped from a psych ward, and he's been calling and writing letters over the last month saying that he's coming back here and he would be violent against any police officer trying to stop him. Well, police checked into it, and they weren't too concerned because he was locked up in a psychiatric ward. That is until today, when they learned that on Sunday, he escaped. Take a good look at this man. 38-year-old Jonathan Babcock escaped from a mental hospital in Maryland and is threatening to come back here. He's a 1983 graduate of Mount Lebanon High School and has complained in the past about not getting back to see his friends from high school. Over the past month, he's called local officials about it. He even wrote police a letter and said he was coming back, sending a picture of himself, apparently he took by himself, and said he would not let them arrest him. Sunday, he escaped. Uh, so most of his concern and interest and focus has been on trying to come back, and, and the threats were directed towards anybody that tried to stop him. So as a precaution, police asked the school to suspend all activities just in case. We abandon and cancel sports events and musical events uh, until Sunday or otherwise informed. Uh, we take the safety and the well-being of our students very seriously and also take very seriously the advice of our local police department. Though police refused to release the letter, Chief Ogden did say there was never a threat against children, only to officers attempting to arrest him. We were just concerned about him coming back to a, a school facility and not being medicated, uh, you know, and finding that he could not make access to the school or, you know, coming in, in contact with a student or a teacher or a school employee. Now, you already saw his picture, but just to give you a little bit of a further description, he's 6'1", about 180 pounds. He has brownish-green eyes and a scar on his left cheek. When last seen, he was wearing blue shorts and a white shirt. That was on Sunday when he escaped. Also, to let you know this, he does have an arrest record. Here's what he's been charged with. Attempted carjacking, resisting arrest, assault, and disorderly conduct. He never went to trial, though, on those charges because it was determined that he was mentally injured incompetent to face charges. By the way, there's no word if that is his red car in the background of that photograph that we showed you. Again, all school-sponsored activities in the Mount Lebanon district have been canceled at least until Sunday. We'll have to keep you posted on when they'll resume. Reporting live in Mount Lebanon, Michelle Wright, Channel 4 Action News. Also new at 11 o'clock, Allegheny County Police have arrested a suspect in the attempted murder of a woman who was going to testify in the trial of an alleged drug kingpin. And police say that suspect, who is just 17, may be connected to three other recent murders. Action News reporter John Greiner joins us live with more. John. Yes, Sally, these were killings in Braddock or involving someone from Braddock that all took place in the last four months. Today, police went to the 17-year-old's home, found him hiding under the bed, and arrested him. You can tell us about what Police say this man, 17-year-old Rodell Surratt, is one of two men who shot and tried to kill 29-year-old LaJay Turner. She was shot four times as she was putting her kids into the car the night before she was to testify for the state against alleged local drug kingpin Tremaine Bristos. There was uh, two males that approached the victim and shot her multiple times. In the course of her being shot, a five-year-old was also hit in the crossfire, and two other children were injured by flying glass. Turner survived, but police say that was fortunate considering the men continued to fire into her body as she lay on the ground. Police believe Surratt is part of a group responsible for at least three murders. Daryl Green shot on the steps of a Braddock church June 23rd. 
Sean Russell of Braddock, whose body was found in a house on Pittsburgh's north side June 21st. And they also believe the group's responsible for the death of Philip Wiggins in his home in Braddock back in March. Well, we've had several homicides as well as several non-fatal shootings. And we believe that the same group of individuals are responsible for a lot of the problems that we're having here. And we're trying to put all that together and make arrests in these cases. County police arrested Surratt without incident as he hid under a bed in his Braddock home Wednesday. He's charged with attempted homicide. They also arrested his mother, Bernadette Bradley, who they say misled them about her son being in the house. Surratt was arrested because a witness identified him as one of the men who shot Miss Turner. Now, after her shooting, Bristow's drug trial was postponed and rescheduled for September 15th. Live in the newsroom, John Greiner, Channel 4 Action News. Also new at 11 o'clock, he robbed a local pharmacy at gunpoint so he could get his hands on OxyContin. Witnesses say the man on this surveillance tape walked into the medicine shop in Brookline this afternoon, held up a gun, and demanded the women behind the counter give him the painkiller. He got what he came for and left through the back door. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Police are looking for that robber tonight. You can see how difficult this McKeesport fire was to, uh, to put out. The smoke was so thick it was difficult to see the apartment building that's being ripped apart by the fast-moving flames. McKeesport fire crews arrived less than two minutes after getting the call. The combination of the intense heat of the flames and the humid, muggy weather took its toll on fire crews. Four firefighters were injured. Three suffered heat exhaustion, the other hit with falling debris. They knew this was going to be a rough one. When we pulled up, we already had a third floor completely full of smoke and flames coming out the bedroom window at the far end of the building. At first, everything went smoothly for crews. They got everyone out safely. Seven families chased from their homes. Oh, it was shooting. There was smoke everywhere. At times, you couldn't even see the flames at all. I mean, it was just so much smoke. It was awful. I was standing out here crying. I didn't walk up to talk to them to see all these little kids and these young girls with kids, you know. They're really going to need some help. With firefighters on the roof, crews thought they had won the battle. But then, out of nowhere, a hidden danger became big trouble. We knocked the fire down in the bedroom very quickly, and we thought we had the fire. We moved to the roof to open up some holes to ventilate, and, uh, and it was clear. But then within five minutes, all of a sudden, we had smoke again. The tricky flames snaked their way through the crawl space up inside a triple ceiling on the third floor. Firefighters were ordered off the roof, and they attacked the flames from the bottom once again. Now the focus is on the families who have to rebuild their lives. I think it was a mother of one set of the kids and grandkids, and, the, and they don't have no place to stay. That's sad. Right now, authorities believe a five-year-old girl playing with a cigarette lighter started the mattress fire in a bedroom. The fire marshal continues to investigate that. Meantime, the Red Cross is helping out the families find shelter tonight. More human cases of West Nile virus, this time in western Pennsylvania. The Allegheny County Health Department says two people, one in Allegheny County and one in Lawrence County, were diagnosed with the virus. One victim, a 76-year-old Lawrence County man, was released from the hospital yesterday. A 46-year-old Allegheny County man got the bug back in June but did not have to be hospitalized. The virus infected 22 and killed four in Allegheny County last year. Those at the greatest risk are the elderly and people with respiratory problems. Workers are making quick progress on the Fort Pitt project, and that is good news for drivers. A live look from the PennDOT camera. PennDOT announced today that parts of the project will reopen three weeks early. Other parts will still be in effect through September. The inbound bridge and tunnel going into downtown and the Fort Duquesne Bridge area will open on Saturday, August 16th at 9 o'clock in the morning. The outbound bridge and tunnel will be closed for one more week so workers can remove the crossovers and the detours. Outbound lanes open Saturday, August 23rd. Drivers heading inbound on the Fort Pitt Bridge will not be able to access the Parkway East. The Parkway East ramp from the Fort Pitt Bridge will reopen in late September. Now, during this transition, parts of the detour will remain in effect. Well, you can log on to the Pittsburgh Channel for all the details and to review all of that. One day after new warnings about a revived Al-Qaeda terror agenda, more details are emerging about what the U.S. is doing to prevent new suicide attacks using airplanes. Along with the warning about hijacking attempts, ABC News has learned the government also directed airlines to take specific security steps this week, including extra screening for certain passengers boarding flights at foreign airports. Those traveling without a visa 
and passengers stopping over in the U.S. between international airports. U.S. Customs officials estimate 361,000 non-citizens passed through America's airports last year on their way from one foreign city to another. Those layovers do not require a U.S. visa. The warning comes as the Transportation Security Administration is preparing to cut its budget for federal air marshals. The TSA said it could cut $100 million from the program. But Secretary of Homeland Security Tom Ridge appeared to kill that idea in the face of the current threat. America should know that every air marshal that we have is being deployed and additional resources, resources are being directed to that very critical mission. Today in his first solo news conference since before the start of the war, Mr. Bush called the warnings of possible new terror airplane hijackings a real threat. The president also addressed Iraq. Even in our own experiment with democracy, it didn't happen overnight. I never expected Thomas Jefferson to emerge in Iraq in a 90-day period. And I'm confident that our search will yield that which I strongly believe, that Saddam had a weapons program. For the first time, the president said he takes full responsibility for that statement he made in January State of the Union address, suggesting Iraq was trying to acquire uranium from Africa. Tonight, a 46-year-old Allegheny County man is charged with molesting an 11-year-old girl since last December. Today, county police arrested Joseph Michael Carney on charges he touched and fondled the girl sexually on 10 separate occasions. Most of the incidents occurred at Carney's Hampton residence. Carney is charged with aggravated indecent assault, indecent assault, corrupting a minor, and endangering the welfare of a child. He was charged with raping a three-year-old girl. He pleaded guilty, but withdrew that plea. Today, Robert Kennedy of Greensburg was found not guilty. Kennedy was accused of assaulting a girl he was babysitting back in 1998. He was arrested last year. He's charged with breaking into homes and sexually assaulting women. Well, today, Mark Filipino, acting as his own attorney, was to confront his victims. But late this afternoon, he changed his mind and pleaded guilty to a number of charges, including sexual assault, after his victim took the stand. Filipino was sentenced to serve 7 to 20 years in prison after the sentence he is already serving for burglary. He still faces trial in a similar case. Steelworkers at Wheeling Pitt have approved a new five-year contract. It is a major victory for the steelmaker, which needed the new labor agreement to emerge from bankruptcy by the middle of August. Now, under this new contract, 650 employees will participate in a buyout program. Those who stay with the company will take a 15% pay cut for 13 months. Hopes dashed in a family in pain. The hunt for a woman who claimed she was a girl reported missing 16 years ago. Also, Toronto free of SARS and ready to rock. Stars and songs to bring back tourists when Action News continues. Also this, a department store Pittsburgh fought hard to get, pulls out why it may say more about the nation's economy than the city's. I'm Shannon Perrine. That story's coming up in a live report. And take a look at these shiny new cars. What they did to land on the lemon list when Action News continues. And I'm meteorologist Don Swanick. A couple showers west of the city tonight. We'll talk about the showers that are out there and the showers that are headed our way in the complete Denardo Weather Watch forecast. That's coming up next. How do we let this happen? Why does the government always know where I am, what I'm doing? A tracking device in your cell phone? Thursday at 5 on Channel 4 Action News. When a husband becomes a woman, what becomes of his wife? Hear from the families who are living it next open. Thursday at 4, followed by Action News. <laughs> It's the July Countdown event at your Chrysler dealer. Counting down the final days of the summer sales drive with America's best values. Like no payments until 2004, in addition to 0% APR financing for 60 months for very well-qualified buyers. Or up to $4,000 in cash allowances and low financing for 72 months. Plus, get a $750 military bonus. And our transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. July is counting down and so is the summer sales drive. Hurry to your Chrysler dealer before July 31st. 
At work, stay informed with the Pittsburgh Channel. Track severe storms with Donato Weather Watch and get breaking news throughout your workday online at the Pittsburgh Channel. You told us overnight news coverage is important, so we focused on complete overnight coverage. It's One Way Channel 4 Action News is taking action for you. A major downtown retailer and the cornerstone for future development. Tonight, Lord & Taylor says it is closing. They had a deal. The Lord & Taylor department store got big incentives to open up a store downtown three years ago. In turn, they promised to operate for at least five years. Well, today the store's owner says the Pittsburgh store and 31 others across the U.S. will close due to disappointing sales. Action News reporter Shannon Prine is live with more on the deal and what happens now, Shannon? Well, Sally, for some of us who remember the days when we shopped at Gimbel's and Horns in the downtown, the opening of the Lord & Taylor store seemed to signal the end of the retail hemorrhaging going on in the Golden Triangle over the past few decades. Well, today's news shows that that wound has yet to heal. Disappointed Lord & Taylor employees say the company let them down. It's like getting you pumped up your heart, you know, all excited, and then just to let you down, drop you for a call. Even though Lord & Taylor tries to set itself apart by marketing the store as more of an upscale department store, the competition for downtown shopping dollars is stiff, with Kaufman's, first of all, also owned by the May Company, right across one street, and the ultra-upscale Saks Fifth Avenue right across another street. The May Company received millions of dollars in incentives to locate here three years ago. A city official tells me the company intends to honor its part of the bargain by continuing to operate the Pittsburgh store until 2005. Even though the money May received in the deal did not come directly from tax dollars, taxpayers are still angry. That's what I'd like to know what happened to the agreement, but it really doesn't surprise me that they would uh, close the store. But it does hurt a little bit because that was a historic landmark and you ripped it up and you put in a store that didn't even guarantee or won't even stay here for the duration, and that's pretty sad. Because so many other Lord & Taylor stores are closing, County Executive Jim Roddy says this closure is symptomatic of the nation's sluggish economy, not just Pittsburgh's. Even still, he says the key to boosting retail in the Golden Triangle is luring people to live between the rivers. We have about oh, maybe 4,000 people that live in the Golden Triangle. We really ought to have 20,000 people living there. And I think that's really the key. If we had enough people living downtown, uh, then the retail would take care of itself. There are 78 employees at the Pittsburgh Lord & Taylor. They so far have not been given any official word that the store is closing. Reporting live, I'm Shannon Perron, Channel 4 Action News. Looking for a new car? Well, you might want to look at this list first. It's the Lemon List, compiled by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. It's a list of the vehicles that received the most consumer complaints this year. Here are the top five lemons on the list. The Ford Escape, the Toyota Prius, the Oldsmobile Aurora, the Ford Excursion, and the Mitsubishi Eclipse. The list is not made public by the government. Call for Action got it through Lemon Law attorney Craig Kimmel. This is more or less a list of what to steer clear of if you have any concerns or are trying to narrow down your list uh, from several different vehicles to one. I would use it as a tool for that reason. It doesn't mean that these cars are all bad, but it does mean that people are complaining about them. Consumers had different kinds of complaints about each car. If you're having problems with one of the cars on the list, well, check out the Pennsylvania Lemon Law. You might be able to get a new car or a refund. We have the Lemon List and information on the Lemon Law on our website, thepittsburghchannel.com, and tomorrow at 5. Call for Action reporter Susan Copen will have a list of the best buys. 24-hour Donardo weather watch. Couple of showers moving through eastern portions of Ohio tonight. Otherwise dry across the region. We'll show you those showers right now. Let's take a look at live pinpoint Doppler weather radar, and you can see the showers continuing. One little pocket of light showers down in southeastern Washington County. Also. Excuse me. We do have some showers through western Monroe County, uh, moving on up through Carroll County and western Columbiana County. All of those showers are moving to the north. So other than maybe a couple of sprinkles through Washington County, those other areas of showers should stay out there and not move through the metro. But we do have rain in the forecast. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Take a live look outside tonight. And as we look into the Golden Triangle, we check the numbers. Normally this time of year, 83s are high, 63s are low. Today, we made it up to 83 with 60 for a low temperature. We were a degree and a half below normal. Currently, we've got fair skies. 
10 miles visibility. And we're at 74 degrees, 64% humidity. Winds are out of the southeast at 8, and pressure falling 30.11 inches of mercury. Numbers from around the region tonight, 60s through the mountains, 66 in Johnstown, 68 in Dubois, 74 in the Berg, 73 in Morgantown, Erie checking in with 74, 73 in Youngstown, Parkersburg seeing 72 degrees. We look at what's going on regionally. Satellite radar composite shows that little pocket of energy pushing just a couple of showers north for the most part, nice and dry here. Look at the showers firing back through Wisconsin tonight, though. That's the next big weather maker that is headed our way. If we zoom it out, we can show you the system. Real easy to pick out the counterclockwise rotation. That's an area of low pressure. It's got the frontal boundaries coming off of it. And as the cold air runs into the warm air, the showers and thunderstorms are being triggered. How cold? Look at the difference in temperatures with this system. 57 in International Falls. 22 degrees warmer as you get down into Minneapolis. So this contrast in warm air and cold air is headed our way. We'll see the warm air over the next couple of days. For the rest of tonight, temperatures are going to be near normal for overnight lows. We'll call it 64 degrees. There are partly cloudy skies, warm conditions. Again, an isolated shower mainly west of the city. Then tomorrow, temperatures back into the 80s. 82, partly cloudy and warm. Scattered thunderstorms will fire as we head through tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night, 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies. An isolated shower of thunderstorms still possible. As we head through Friday, 81, variably cloudy, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Then a look at your exclusive DiNardo Weather Watch 5-day forecast. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, chance of showers each day. Saturday, variably cloudy skies. Afternoon thunderstorms, 83. Sunday, variably cloudy. Some thunderstorms mainly in the afternoon, 80. Partly cloudy with an afternoon shower on Monday and 79 degrees. Looks a little worse than it is. These are going to be hit and miss showers, but definitely at least a chance of rain over the next five days. All right. We're used to it. Yeah, yeah. bring it on. Yeah. What's some more? Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. An Indiana family searching for a daughter lost in 1986 has found only more heartbreak tonight. A woman who claimed to be the missing girl now grown up is a fraud, police said today. She herself is now missing and facing criminal charges. For a few precious days, there was hope. Hope that nearly 17 years after Shannon Cheryl vanished, she was alive and coming home. But today the Sherrills learned that they were the target of a cruel hoax. When they called me with the information that we were going to have a news conference, I thought they were going to bring Shannon in here. I thought this was something. <laughs> Indiana police are now looking for this woman, Donna Walker. Investigators say the Topeka, Kansas woman called the Sherrills claiming to be their long-lost daughter. Shannon was six years old when she disappeared from her backyard in 1986. There was an exhaustive police search and the pleadings of a family. I love you. I miss you. I want you to come home. <laughs> the years passed and no word from Shannon. Until Sunday. Until a phone call from a woman claiming to be her. I lost all concentration on it. I had a million questions to ask and I just forgot every one of them when she said hello. She told Cheryl she was living in Virginia Beach and had been raised by her abductors. The Cheryls were hopeful as police investigated. Today they learned it was all a lie. That the only good that may come out of this is to stir someone's conscience that knows true, valid information about the disappearance of Shannon Marie Cheryl. Police don't know why anyone would call claiming to be Shannon. They say she likely got details about the case from old newspapers, the Internet, and her conversation with Cheryl. Tomorrow is decision day for the Pirates and Pittsburgh's best hockey player. We'll explain. And Camp Tower goes under the lights. We'll take you to Latrobe and the Steelers' first moonlight session. Sounds romantic. I don't think so. When Action News continues. July is counting down, and so is the Jeep Summer Sales Drive. Now, very well-qualified buyers can make no monthly payments until 2004 and get 0% financing. Or choose up to a $3,000 cash allowance and low financing for 72 months. Plus, current military personnel receive an additional $750 cash allowance. Add in our 770 powertrain limited warranty, and you've got the best values in America. But July is counting down, so hurry in before July 31st to the Jeep Summer Sales Drive. 
I'm Corey, and this is where I work. I like working the drive through a lot. We all work as a team. When people come through our drive through they're in a hurry. They have other places to be. That's why we're fast and accurate. Yes, we check every bag just to make sure everything's in there. And we check every bag. To work here, you have to be a real people person. You gotta make sure that you smile. This is a very friendly place. Maybe brighten their day a little bit. And right now, you can get your choice of two Big Macs, two Quarter Pounders with cheese, or two supersized orders of fries for just three bucks. Mix or match any two items, just three bucks. See you soon. No material gives a home character as quickly as brick. This 200-year-old Georgian, for example, was actually built last month. This message brought to you by the brick industry. Real homes are made of brick. Nothing lasts forever. The brick in this 100-year-old house will need some maintenance sometime in the next 75 to 100 years. This message brought to you by the brick industry. Real homes are made of brick. Toyota's summer sales event is the one for you. It's the only one with more choices and real Toyota value, like tough Tacoma trucks, including hot double cab models, now with 750 cash back or low 2.9% APR financing up to five years. Maybe the one for you is a full-size Tundra. Stay with 1,500 cash back or 0% financing up to four years. Get an all-new 4Runner or 8-passenger Sequoia. For more choices and better value, Toyota's summer sales event is the one for you. This is Action Sports with Andrew Stockey. Well, the best show on ice is ready to return. Now, we've known for almost a month, but tomorrow morning, Mary Lemieux makes it official. Lemieux will announce his return to the ice next season. In fact, he's been working out the last six weeks. I guess the only question is, what's taking Mario so long to make up his mind? Now, we will be there for Mario's announcement tomorrow, but tonight, Action Sports in Lake Trobe, where the Steelers worked out under the lights. It's the first of two nighttime sessions at Camp Cower. John Burton on the night shift with the black and gold. Well, nighttime certainly is the right time for the Steelers and their fans. In front of a packed house here at Latrobe High School, the Steelers held their first of two night practices. The Steelers arrived by bus from St. Vincent College, and there were plenty of black and gold fans ready to greet them. These fans were able to meet and greet their black and gold heroes as the team held a 15-minute autograph session prior to taking the field. For the players, it was a chance to get up close and personal with the loyal Steeler Nation. Oh, yeah, man, you know, every time we come to Trump, I always know it's going to be a good turnout. The fans here, they welcome us here, and uh, we get a chance to come and sign for the fans. It's always good, you know what I mean? It really doesn't hurt anybody to go out there and uh, give back to the ones who support us. It's always fun because, you know, it's a different um, scene, you know. We come out here and throw on the show at the same time, you know, getting some work done, and, you know, it makes, it makes the whole evening fun. And for the younger players, tonight's event gave them a first-hand look at how crazy Western PA is about their football team. It makes, gives them a taste of what football is like in Pittsburgh and how important it is. So, um, you know, I think they all recognize you know, that this is a football town, and, you know, I think they're getting a taste of that up at this training camp. Of course, the highlight of every night practice is when the offense and the defense line up right here at the five-yard line and do a little full-contact goal line. And the fans weren't disappointed tonight. There were several big plays put in by both the offense and the defense. At Latrobe Stadium, John Burton, Channel 4, Action Sports. Good times at Latrobe, but tense times for players like Jeff Supon at PNC Park. Baseball's trade deadline hits at 3 p.m., actually 4 p.m. tomorrow, and teams like the Astros and the Cardinals have been inquiring about the Pirate pitcher. But just because there is a deadline looming, the Bucks brass say that does not mean they have to make a deal. Boarding up against the time deadline, there is probably more pressure to for guys to fish or cut bait and make decisions as to what they're going to do. But, uh, you know, we're not going to be influenced really by deadlines as much as we're going to be influenced by what makes sense for us uh, trying to improve the team. So the Pirates play on hosting San Diego. Reggie Sanders he might be traded tomorrow. But he's definitely going deep in the fourth inning. His 20th of the season, good for a three-run jack. And the Pirates take the lead three to two. Big night for Brian Giles. There goes career home run number 200. Earlier, Giles got career base hit number 1,000. His sixth inning smash brings us two more runs. Same frame now, and Mr. Sanders back up, and the Colonel crushes this one. Second home run of the night, a two-run shot. Sanders' 20th career multi-homer game as they pound the Padres 7-2. Now, the good thing about the fact that Sanders and Giles are hitting the ball well, Pirates have a lot more leverage if they want to make a trade. They can probably get a lot more when these guys are playing as They're well. They're getting so. hot at the right time. They are, but it's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow. I'm sure it's going to be at least one deal made by the Pirates, if not more. Yeah. All right, Andrew, thanks.
can't wait. Mm. All right, tonight they're calling it SARS stock. Up next, we'll take you to 11 hours of music headlined by some of the biggest acts today. It's the July Countdown event at your Chrysler dealer. Counting down the final days of the summer sales drive with America's best values. Like no payments until 2004, in addition to 0% APR financing for 60 months for very well-qualified buyers. Or up to $4,000 in cash allowances and low financing for 72 months. Plus, get a $750 military bonus. And our transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. July is counting down and so is the summer sales drive. Hurry to your Chrysler dealer before July 31st. We have some breaking news to pass along to you. Sam Phillips, who discovered Elvis Presley and helped usher in the rock and roll revolution, has died at the age of 80. No details are available about the cause of death, but he was in the hospital at the time. Phillips founded Sun Records in Memphis in 1952 and helped to launch the career of Elvis Presley. Speaking of rock and roll, the Stones came rolling into Toronto today to lift the spirits of a city hit hard by song. Bands such as the Isley Brothers, ACDC, Rush, and the Guess Who have warmed up the sea of fans for the big headliner, the Rolling Stones, who should be on stage, Sally, right about now. Hundreds of thousands of fans celebrated Sorry Stock with the headlining Rolling Stones and several other bands we mentioned. Organizers wanted to lure people to Toronto where two springtime SARS outbreaks devastated the tourism industry. That's actually News 11. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Channel 4 Action News is brought to you by Walmart. Channel 4 Action News, tonight a weather watch. Setting the standard for severe weather forecasting with the most experienced team of local meteorologists warning you of severe weather first. Another way to know the weather watch is taking action. Beat the clock and save at Schultz Dodge. Through July 31st, buy a new Dodge Caravan with no money down.